Hi guys, Ren here and welcome to the workshop. We have a technical video today about SRAM's newest power meters. Uh, if you watched my previous videos, uh, you may know that I've been quite disenchanted with uh, SRAM's choice of integrating the chain ring into the power meter itself. Uh, mainly because often I was using or switching between 1x and 2x setups. Uh, with this it's not so easy because you need to actually have not just two sets of chain rings but also two sets of power meters which are well basically the same item and that is quite expensive although then I found the solution for this gripe I had uh, and it's this thing here uh, just turned on so this is the gravel slash uh, CX version of the 1x power meter and uh, as you can see it doesn't have an integrated chain ring it has a 4 times 107 mil uh, ball circle diameter which is um, well it's not common it's of course unique to this power meter which is a shame uh, at the moment uh, there are some aftermarket options uh, that are coming for this so potentially with this spider you can have a double and uh, single ring setups. Uh, SRAM's offerings are quite limited. Uh, it goes just from 40 to 46, which well, 46 for fast road riding might not be enough. <coughs> Sorry, so uh, and also no double setups for this because the force chain rings which should fit here are not really available for sale separately just yet. Uh, I think they will be with time so <clears throat> if you need the interchangeability and why the compatibility this is the spider you need to go for one thing that hasn't changed uh, from the D0 well this is basically still the D0 is the 8 bolt interface which brings me neatly onto the older style power meter which is this one uh, now one thing you need to know about SRAM's new group set is that all the cranks are based on the dub spindle which uh, is great because this is SRAM's lightest crank set to date uh, the bearings work a treat uh, the bottom bracket fits uh, every frame with an exception uh, the cranks are beautifully made super light very stiff so I really really like this system neat little preload color on there very easy to set up correctly, uh, to spin very freely, no creaks. So very happy with the new crank system. However, I have uh, three track bikes that run the BP90 uh, bottom bracket interface in the frame. And uh, that's very, very annoying in this case because this bottom bracket interface is the only one that doesn't fit this new type of dub spindle it's simply because the outer diameter of the bearing is just not large enough to have or support a 29 mil inner diameter uh, so what is the solution for that well on the time trial bike i can just get a uh, different chaining manufactured use the same power meter the other power meters I've sold, so I wanted to solve the issue on the cross bikes by getting uh, well basically an old style a red D0 power meter because this itself uses the 8 bolt interface, uh, same as the new one. The problem though that I've experienced is that here on this part. Uh, the shape of the crank arm is a tiny bit different and uh, it interferes with this little rubber cover which is not a problem because you can just remove this but underneath there is this opening uh, for the crank arm and the new crank arm has a different shaping here so the old one just wouldn't fit despite uh, using the same interface and that's a bummer for me because now I have to, or I had to order uh, the new crank in the D124mm spindle version 
which is just available on special order so you can't really get it anywhere uh, on the internet only through a SRAM distributor it will take eight weeks to arrive and uh, this will hopefully fit uh, or well it surely will fit because that's what track Segafrey they use so yeah uh, the new crank interface is great unless you run track bikes well it is still great it's just tracks fault I think that and I really hate this feature about their frame because it just limits the compatibility so much because you have to run this uh, old school GXP spindle which is is heavy and I don't really like how it works with the angular contact bearing etc with the preload you have to mess around with the spacing the tolerances uh, here you just have a neat little preload color everything is nicely matched up and you can set it up uh, smoothly within minutes so uh, really really good as for all the style chain rings and the compatibility um, I have a couple of examples here uh, this is a an older style X-Sync ring that's quite worn uh, this would fit potentially into the new chain no problem then there's this aero coach ring with a tall feet design, a bit different. This one is not compatible as you can see. And if you have a basically almost new axing chain ring, then this will not really fit at all. Or in some parts it does, depending on the on the tolerance. You can see here it doesn't. Uh, and as for the functioning of the power meter itself, it's essentially the same. As with the old unit, same app, uh, same updating, same zero resetting, so no big difference is there. Okay, so this is basically all you need to know about uh, the new SRAM axis power meters. If you have some questions, then don't hesitate to drop them down below. It's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.